All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I've been going through a series of video presentations to finish the textbook we've had for our application in web development, AWD 1000 Web Development Technologies class. The book is JavaScript and jQuery 3rd Edition from Muroc, and we've gone through the first 12 chapters as a class. Since then, I've gone over lectures for chapters 13, 14, and 15, which means I got three left, 16 through 18. So this is the attempt at chapter 16, how to work with arrays. As it says there, we were introduced to arrays in chapter three, but this is a chapter that much more talks about arrays in a lot more depth and breadth of coverage. Now, one of the things that I've been doing is I've been pushing this website that I have used before and it's uh, hunlock.com. Now, the site has been archived because it isn't uh, being, I don't believe at least, it's not being uh, supported anymore directly. But it's one of the better sites I've seen for JavaScript, period. And there it is. I guess that's as big as I can make it, 36-point font. I'll leave that up there for just a second. So if you have any desire to copy that down or whatever, you're able to do so. All right, so let's get to it. So how to create and use an array, how to use array methods, the task list application that we looked at earlier, rewritten with arrays, other skills with working with arrays, and yet another version of the task list. All right. So an array is an object that contains one or more items. Each item in an array is called an element. The way that you reference an array is you use what are called indexes or indices. All right. And arrays always have a size. Now, just very quickly, this is the way I explain arrays, and it may be good, it may not be that good. But, all right, I live in a house right now, but before I did, I lived in an apartment. And in that apartment, like I said, maybe not the greatest of explanations, but we're the one we're going to use. So, the unit I lived in was an eight-family unit, all right? And let's imagine that, I don't know, this was just called apartment. Now, if, if the address for the apartment was 100 Park Place, then this might be 100 Park Place, apartment one, apartment two, Apartment 3, Apartment 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Well, with arrays, if we call these apartments, okay, and we say that it is of size 8, it's done a little bit differently. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's suppose, I'm going to try to keep this simple, that, that here we had me, all right? And then we had Jones, and then we had Taylor, and then we had Green, and then we had white, and then we had black, and then we had gray, and finally we had, I don't know, Kelly. All right. The way that you would reference this in JavaScript land, so to speak, would be, and I'm going to make that a lowercase a. You would call this apartment sub zero, sub short for subscript, equals Scott. Apartment 
1 equals Jones. You get the idea. I don't think I have to keep going here. But the point is, each one of these array locations, all right, is referenced by what is called an index or a subscript. This is index 0, index 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The array is of size 8, but it has components 0 through 7. Now, one thing that's different from JavaScript arrays than most other languages, if I decided that instead of Kelly in here, I wanted to put in 137, I can mix and I can have both strings and numbers. This could be a Boolean. That's all legal in JavaScript land. Now, it's also legal in languages like PHP. That is not legal in most programming languages. In most programming languages, the elements of, a, of the array or the, what the array contains must be of the same type. So there's two ways that you can create a brand new array. You can say var array name equals new array, or you can say var array name equal bracket bracket. So you can give it a size like this, all right, or you can just say like that with two brackets. Either way will work. There's a, there are different ways of doing this. Now they go through here and they talk about how to create and assign, but that's kind of what I've just shown you. So an array can store one or more elements. The length of the array is the number of elements in the array. Eh. If you create an array without specifying the length, the, the array doesn't contain any elements. Again, that's something you can do in JavaScript that you cannot do in most languages. When you create an array of one or more elements without assigning values to them, each element is automatically set to undefined. To refer to the elements in the array, you use the index or subscript, where 0 is the first, 1 is the second, etc. So, how to add and delete array elements? Well, if I want to add array elements, for instance, let's suppose, looking at the example that I gave you before, now, let's just say somehow we add a new unit here. I know that doesn't normally happen in the world of apartments, but we said here too, let's just see, I don't remember what these were, but let's just say uh, Kelly and Smith. Why? Because that's probably about the kind of names you'd have in there. And then uh, got Kelly, let's put Keller. So we come in here, we set up this thing right here, and as I showed you before, we could do this. Now, I don't want to belab belittle this, belabor it, but I do want to show you another way that we could have, could have created this array. We could have just come through here and done this. and then said, zero is Scott, one is Jones, two is Taylor, three is Green, four is white, five is black. These are supposed to be last names. If you haven't figured that out already. Uh, then we got what? Kelly and Smith. Now, all those numbers that are there have to change as well. 0, 1, 2, 3, 
4, 5, 6, and 7. If I want to add this new one with Keller in there, I can do it two ways. I can come in and I can say apartment 8 equals Keller, and it'll work just fine. But what if I've got thousands of these locations? I don't know what the next number is. All right, I can come in there and say apartment, apartment dot length equal Keller. And that'll automatically add a new element at the end and put it in there. All right. So to delete an element, if we do this, that's element 0, element 1, element 2, element 3. If we delete element 2, 0, 1, well, now we have 1, 2. Notice if we delete it, it's undefined. There's nothing in there anymore. All right. Here we created an array with four elements, element 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then in element 6, we put the number 7. So we have nothing right now in element 4 or element 5. So they become undefined as well. So one way to add an element to the end of the array is to use the length property, as I showed you. If you add an element at a specific in instance that isn't the next one in sequence, it's filled with the values of un undefined. To remove all elements of an array at one time, you can set the length to zero, as they've done right there. This, where you put something in element, you know, one, and then you don't put anything else in there till element 1,000, so you've got 999 undefined elements in between them. That's called a sparse array. It says you can also add items to an array by using the methods of the array object, which we're going to get to in just a minute. Now, for loops are meant to work with arrays, all right? So, you know, if you, if you look at it this way, let, let's, let's run through a very, very, and I mean as an extremely simple program, all right? So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say var grades equals bracket, uh, yeah, bracket, bracket, that should work var lcb equals zero var num students let's we'll, we're going to assume for this case that we've got 50 students all right so i'm going to come in here and i'm going to say i want to create 50 grades for in fact, we can just set the LCV up right in here. For LCV equals zero, LCV less than num studs, num students, and we could make that a constant too. That's no big thing. That's not what this is about. Plus plus LCV. Now, one thing I'd shown you a long time ago was how we can come in here and, come on, I guess it'd be possible to get a zero on the test. You didn't take it or you got everything wrong. So let's generate a random number between 0 and 100. Um, so we're going to have what? Uh, grades. So what, the, what is that doing? 
that is literally going to take every locate lo every array location starting with location 0 and it's going to fill it with a grade between 0 and 100 all right so after we did this if later on in the program we did this and we just said i don't know uh, document dot write grades sub LCV like that that would print out something like 89 77 65 45 2 34 56 etc it would print out 50 of these now I would probably have to add to the end of that plus my BR tag or something like that. The point is this would be filling up our array with 50 test grades that are random numbers between 0 and 100. This would print out those values. Again, for loops work hand, oops, hand in hand with arrays. Now, not only is there a for loop, there's something that's called a for in loop that you can use when you work with arrays. If we look at the example that's right here, for var index in numbers, numbers is the name of the array, index is just a variable that we're creating on the fly. So this is going to create a string and it's going to put in each one of those values, all right? So we could have done something like this in our example that we had before. So this is going to let me copy this. I'm going to try. Yeah, it is. Good. All right. So had we said this, had var index in, going to make that grades, and we'll make this grade string instead of number string. We didn't have to do that. We could have used their, their names. But what this will do then, instead of this one right here, this will again print out all 50 grades. But... It will print them out with a space between them, 45, space, 67, space, 88, space, 90, space, 11, space, 23, space, 44, space, 56, space. So it'll have 50 of those. So these two lines, the lines that we put in here, and the ones we put in here, basically are doing the same thing. So the for in statement can be used to create a loop that accesses only those elements that have specifically assigned values. All right, you can go and take a look at that yourselves, I guess. Okay, the methods of an array object. Methods that accept simple parameters. Let's look right here. So these are different things that you can use with arrays. Push to add an element, one or more, to the end of the array. Pop, to remove one or more elements from the end of the array. Unshift, to add one or more elements to the beginning of an array. Shift, to remove elements Okay, from the beginning of the array. Reverse, which reverses the order of array elements. Splice, and there's different ways that you can use splice Kind of like, imagine that you've got a pie, and you are cutting off pieces, and after you put, take the pieces out, you put the pie back together again. All right, not only is there splice, there's slice. There's concat, where you can join arrays together. There's join, where you can join arrays together. There's two strings. So there's a lot of different things that you can use in here. 
There's one, too, that's not shown that I'd like to show you, and that is this. If I came through here, and as you can see, I've got these values that are right here. Okay? If I took my grades array and I said this, grades.sort. Now if I printed out these numbers, let's just make this an array of size 10 instead of 50, just because it's easier, that's all. 7, 8... 9, 10. If I ran grades.sort on this, now I'm going to get the following. 11, 11, 23, 45, 49, 56, 67, 88, 90. Is that 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm missing one. Looks like 44. But you see what happened right there? Now you cannot sort in reverse order. But after I've run this and I say grades.sort, then in my next line I can say grades.reverse and now it will give me 90, 88, 67, 56, 49, 45, 44, 23, 11, 11. Okay? Just trying to give you a flavor of some of the things that are available to you here. All right? So I guess I had shown you sort already. There's for each. There are a lot of functions that do or do not accept parameters. <clears throat> Muroc does a fine job in here of going through at least the majority of these. As mentioned previously, if you do go out to the Hunlock site and you go down far enough in here, let's see. Here's an array methods reference. I don't think there's anything better than what you're going to find here. For instance, if I choose pop, at least I thought it would. Well, I thought that they gave me an example. Oh, I guess the examples are underneath. So I showed you sort. For each, every, sum, map, and filter except an optional second parameter. There's reduce. There's all sorts of them. So they give you some examples. How to use push and pop, slice and concat, etc. I think that this lecture is already getting a little out of hand. I want to keep it 30 minutes or under, so I'm going to kind of step it up a little bit. The task list that we looked at earlier, there it is. But the difference is now we're taking all of our tasks and we're putting them into an array. And then we are sorting them. So by default, they will be in alphabetic order. If we didn't want that or we wanted them in reverse al alphabetic order, we either could have put, you know, if we wanted reverse, we could have said task.sort, then after that, task.reverse. Or we could have left this out if we didn't want to do any sorting. All right. So the application uses an array to store the tasks added by the user. It uses the sort and join methods. To add a new task to the end of the array, it uses the push method. To clear the tasks, it assigns a new array to the tasks variable. And that overwrites the one that was there. That's right here. All right. There are different string methods that you can use with arrays. What you can do with an array is you can do what's called explode it or implode it, basically. And what you can do when you, you know, you can, there's a split here. Splits a string into an array based on the value of a separator. So it could take, like, it, it, for instance, if you look right here, this, this full name, Grace M. Hopper, 
is actually, after you do the split, it's an array of one, two, three elements. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You can take a date and split a date into one, two, three different elements. So there's a lot of different ways that you can work with this stuff. As mentioned here, the split method of a string object is used to convert the components into the elements of an array. If the string doesn't include the separator, the entire string is returned. All right. An associative array. Kind of neat concept. I'm going to show you my take on this. Absolutely nothing wrong with what they show in the book. Let's say that I was going to create an array, and I was going to call it Midwest. I'm going to say here var Midwest states equal, all right, and I'm just going to say bracket, bracket. Then I come through here and I go Midwest states 0 equals Missouri. Midwest states 1 equals Wisconsin. Midwest states 2 equals Illinois. I'm just going to leave it right there. Illinois. All right. And that's fine the way it is. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. The problem is trying to remember that 0 is Missouri. One is Wisconsin, two is, in, is Illinois. So another way we could do this would be to say this. I could say here, and I could put double quotes, mo, w, i, i, l. So when you do this, well, I don't know what happened there. When you do this, instead of using numbers for the indexes, you use strings. That's what you get with an associative array. Much easier, typically, to coordinate the array element value with the actual value that, that the array is holding. Now, you don't have to use these, but it's just kind of a nicety that's available to you if you so desire. How to create and use arrays of arrays. An array of arrays is what's also referred to as a multi-value array. Earlier in the semester, we did a, we did a problem where uh, we had different sales regions and et cetera, and we used multiple arrays. It says their Java doesn't provide for multi-dimension arrays, but you can have an array of arrays, which is essentially the same thing. If you've got a two-dimensional array, you use two index values for each element. One representing the row, one representing the column. All right, so they end the chapter here by redoing this task, appl task application again. Now notice what they've added is a date picker saying when the date is due for the task. All right, so we've added J jQuery, jQuery UI in here both the CSS file and the JavaScript file, and our jQuery file as well, and our own CSS file. All right, and they're using local storage. So as mentioned here, the updated task list lets the user add a due date. It uses the jQuery date picker widget and stores the task and due date in an array of arrays. The tasks are stored in local storage. So it's done a pretty good job of going through and implementing a lot of the stuff that's been shown in the last few chapters. All right, so that's pretty much it. So well, let's quickly look at this summary. Again, an array holds one or more elements. Unlike most programming languages, you can change the value of an array in JavaScript as the program's running. You can add and remove elements in a JavaScript array as the program is running. The elements in the array in a JavaScript array can all be the same type, but don't have to be. Now, one of the terms that I showed or 
introduced to my students, and I'm just going to say it right now, is arrays in non-JavaScript. The arrays in most programming languages are what are called early binded. That means when the program compiles, the system needs to know just how big the array is, and it can't change while the program's running. On the other hand, with JavaScript, PHP, and other languages, the arrays are what are called late binded. In other words, the array is not set until the program is running. That's why you're able to do these things. All right, we looked a little bit at a for loop and a for in. Looked at a couple of the methods, and I gave you a really good resource. Talked about the split method. I showed you uh, an example of an associate array, and we talked about an array of arrays. I'm always kind of confused when people tell me I don't get arrays, I especially two-dimensional arrays. I don't get them at all. And then they, I see that they're working on a spreadsheet. This is an array of arrays. This is a two-dimensional array where when you go down, each one of these numbers here is a row, and when you go across, each letter here is a column. The only difference is when you use an array in JavaScript, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. That's pretty much it as far as what I wanted to cover. The next chapter will be on object-oriented JavaScript. So we will, we will talk about how do you create and use your own objects next.